Hi, this is Dr. Brian Fallon. I direct the Lyme and Tick-Borne Diseases Research Center at the Columbia University Irving Medical Center. It's my pleasure to tell you about the upcoming Lyme Disease Association Annual National Research Conference to be held in Philadelphia this year. This is one of my favorite conferences because uh, I get to learn so much from the other speakers as well as to meet the many people who attend. This conference this year is going to be another uh, outstanding conference. We have covered not only Lyme disease, but other tick-borne diseases, including Babesia and Powassan virus and the rickettsial diseases, uh, in particular anaplasma as well. We also will be talking about how climate change affects ticks and the spread of ticks. We will talk about clinical aspects, including how to approach diagnosis and treatment of patients with neurologic Lyme disease, cardiac Lyme disease, ophthalmologic Lyme disease. Uh, you'll be here to talk for me on clinical trials and what new opportunities present themselves in terms of both assessments as well as different approaches to treatments that need to be studied. Uh, you'll be hearing talks about uh, the basic immunology of early and post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome as well as talks about um, diagnostics such as peptides in the urine, nanopeptides in the urine, as well as um, transcriptome profiling as a way of uh, developing a diagnostic test for Lyme disease. You'll be learning about uh, how the brain and the GI tract connect and how gut-brain interactions may be impacting neurobehavioral symptoms. You'll be hearing about genetics and what they uh, inform us about uh, Borrelia burgdorferi and the responses uh, in terms of clinical symptoms. And you'll be hearing about uh, how the immune system of patients with early and chronic Lyme disease might differ. Um, so this is going to be a great conference. Uh, it'll be clinically relevant for clinicians as well as of a scientific relevance for young researchers, graduate students, medical students, public health people. Um, and uh, there's more in this conference than I just mentioned, but I just wanted to give you a flavor. Thank you very much, and I very much hope you can attend. At this year's Lyme Disease Conference, I'll be covering the newly completed and published clinical trial of the ABCB1 gene and its possible correlation to post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. This is a human genomic study in which we're looking at single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, that encode for efflux pumps in the human body called P-glycoproteins. This concept of P-glycoprotein variations in humans is actually an exciting new field in personalized medicine, and we're going to be looking at the structure, function and intended purpose of these pumps, as well as some inhibitors, inducers, and variations in the human body. Then we're going to try and tie this all together to some of the symptoms and treatment of our Lyme disease patients. I look forward to working through this material with you in the conference. Hi, I am Adrian Baranchek, a cardiologist and electrophysiologist working at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Lyme carditis occurs in about 2-3% to of people presented with acute Lyme disease. Its clinical manifestation is usually palpitations or fainting. In patients younger than 50 years old living in endemic areas, presenting with a complete shutdown of the electrical system, Lyme carditis should be suspected and quickly managed as it could rapidly evolve into a more serious problem. An unusual feature of Lyme disease is the constellation of different symptoms that can be found with this disease. You might be curious why this happens. The reason why is because the spirochetes that cause the disease can disseminate through the bloodstream, escape into a wide variety of different tissues, and cause problems wherever they go. My talk today will focus on research in my lab dealing with this process of vascular dissemination using methodology called intravital microscopy, where we can see spirochetes at work in the vasculature in a living mouse. I'll talk a bit about the process itself and how it works, or at least as far as we understand it at this point, uh, and show you some interesting videos of these spirochetes as they work to disseminate from the vasculature. 